Yeah, it's that time once again where John comes in and talks about all the hot news around the UFO world. And we are going to kick things off with a little bit of news from France and the French intelligence agency looking into some UFOs. John, take it away. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for hanging out to listen. It's nice to be here. And uh, yeah, this is actually this is a pretty cool one. Now, this is a little hard to get into um, because it you know it is all in French. If you go to the actual um, if you go to the actual interview, um, but there've been a couple people have been kind enough to translate some of it. And uh, essentially, it's it this gentleman um, named uh, and I'm going to badly pronunciate the poor gentleman's name, but Alain uh, uh, Juliet, uh, I believe. Um, it, Alain essentially, he was a second. Elaine Juliet. Oh, Elaine Juliet. Really? Right. Well, I see. That's what happens when you have, you know, a Quebec in your country, right? You get to actually learn French pronunciations. Um, so, um, uh, but basically, this guy was was actually the the head of the DGSE, DGS, uh, which is the French Intelligence Service. I, I assume that's equivalent to a, a CIA or an MI6 as a, a, a being an out an exterior facing. But it's hard to tell because I remember you telling me that that Canada has one unit that does both. Um, and um, essentially, you know, he what was cool about it is that he said a lot of the same things that we've all been saying. Um, he talked about the possibilities of two parallel worlds, um, you know, that might explain some of the phenomenon. He talks about the fact that, um, you know, in some places uh, the phenomenon goes um, quite unnoticed. Um, he talks about the fact that it, you know, it is more or less classified. I mean, he says a lot of the same things that, that, that we've all been hearing, but to hear it coming out of someone from his position in his native tongue, speaking to his own people, shows to me that there is a, a common thread that's happening in, in all of our countries. And and I think that's a good thing. I think that shows that we're making progress. So is this guy pretty much the equivalent of Lou Elizondo over there? Uh, no, actually, I would say he's more equivalent of like a Brennan. Um, you know, I mean, we're, you know, th we're talking about the, the head of that, the head of that organization. So this is a, this is a very senior level position. Um, and, and, you know, I would, say, I would argue from what I now know about Lou, that Lou was probably about as senior as you can get without having a public face. Um, I, and I think this guy was in a position where he was, you know, he was basically heading the whole organization. So this is, this is more like a, more like a Brennan or, or, or a DNI sort of role. So this is, this is a big deal. This is a really big deal. But, um, but it's like I said, it wasn't that he said anything particularly shocking. It was that he said a lot of the same things and, you know, I mean, for him to be talking about, you know, parallel dimensions and so forth, I mean, you know, that's not normal terminology to be using. And so for him to be saying things like that really shows that there, there really is a common, a common theme that's happening. No, that is really cool. I mean, it, you know, and it just corresponds what we're hearing from not only the United States, Canada, and other countries as well. So the more countries we get on with government officials now not being afraid to talk about this subject so much, I think this is, you know, that's just another, another little uh, centimeter or in the door mm -hmm. that opens up a little bit more. And I think that's absolutely great. All right, let's move on to topic number two, which was Kevin Day was on a podcast recently, kind of going over what's happening with uh, UAP Expedition X. Uh, no, actually, that's not what I have, sir. Or Andrew Knock, pardon me. Yes, I, I apologize. No, no worries, no worries. You're sleepy. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, so basically, Andrew Knock, he is the, um, the producer of Demi Lovato's um, program. And, uh, and so he, he's been the one that had actually been kind of running the show for, for her TV show. And so, uh, he was interviewed and basically um, by, by Christina Gomez. And essentially it was, he, he actually gave away some interesting details that, um, you know, I, I can't speak for all of you listening, but for me, it, it actually, uh, it personally made me a little more interested in checking out her show. Um, in that he did talk about the fact that she uh, made an effort to go out and reach out to uh, experts that were, were willing to, to talk to her, uh, you know, on film. Um, it was essentially um, her and um, a, 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 a dear friend and a sibling that were kind of on this adventure. And they did talk to Kevin Day. They did talk to Nick Pope. 
Um, but she also did some other interesting things in that essentially at one part during the series, she takes a remote viewing class um, and you get to see some of the results of that. And at another place in this program, she actually goes through hypnotic regression. And this is evidently shown in quite detail. And, you know, hypnotic regression is not only, um, you know, a very uh, personal thing when it's done properly, but considering how often it's done improperly, um, it's a very controversial thing for anyone to be doing, especially someone at her, at, you know, at her level. And uh, and she also evidently made a trip to Catalina Island, um, which, uh, you know, no, no doubt was at the advice of, of uh, Kevin Day and some others. But um, so she did actually try to, to try to hit some interesting points in this whole phenomenon world. Um, and according to this producer, um, during one of their uh, night sightings, they did capture something that, that they believe might have actually been a UFO. And that will actually be shown in the, sh in the show. So, it, you know, I mean, I have no idea how much he was talking it up. But um, if you listen to the interview, he was pretty, he, you know, I got to admit, this guy, he kind of impressed me a little bit. Um, you know, he he pushed back on a lot of things. He tried not to be grandiose. He tried to minimize claims and he tried to play it pretty straight. And, you know, I, I got to say, like, uh, I was a little surprised by his demeanor. You know, outside of this, I mean, it all comes down to Demi Lovato. And, you know, when you get people like her or Rob Lowe or... Uh, or Jack Osborne, who are using their celebrity clout to all of a sudden step into research that they never have stepped into, you know, it just, to me, rubs me the wrong way. Granted, they're getting the subject airtime. Granted, they're doing something different, you know, but. Well, so let me give you, let me give you a counterpoint. Okay. Um, a while ago, uh, George Knapp interviewed um, um, uh, Pamela Anderson, you know, uh, of, of, uh, yes. of, of, you know, very interesting fame um, about her paranormal work. And um, and I got to say, um, I was I was kind of shocked. Um, that woman has done a lot of research and a lot of field research. And I don't know if she's been following any methodologies. I don't know if she's been documenting any of it. I don't know how thorough she was, but I mean, she had some stories. And uh, and the thing is, is that when you look at the world, uh, the people that are touched by by this phenomenon, um, it's it's statistically going to appear all over the place. And as a result of that, we should get just as many doctors, lawyers singers, guitarists, drummers, senators, congressmen, prime ministers. I mean, basically the, this should appear in every in every part of society and we really want people from those groups stepping up and talking about their experiences because it makes everyone else more comfortable to do so. And some of these people could actually turn into decent researchers. We don't know. That's being very politically correct. You know, well, it's honestly how I feel. Well, I no, and I and I can see that, and I can appreciate that, and I'm not. Yeah, maybe I am trying to stir it up a little bit here. Okay, maybe I am just to just to play devil's advocate. But you know, it would be nice if these hosts, if these celebrity hosts, actually brought real researchers with them. Okay, as part of their team. That's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, look, there are so many times these celebrities come out and they completely, what's the word I'm looking for? Ignore the community that they are researching in. They come in, they use their influence and their power to come in and say, well, I'm a UFO researcher now, or I'm a Bigfoot researcher, or I'm a ghost hunter. And they completely ignore the community. We've seen it numerous times over the decades since this type of television has become very popular and ratings worthy. You know, and for some of them, they're just trying to get another 15 minutes of fame in front of the camera as their acting career has died down or winding down or whatever it may be. Now, I'm not saying they don't have an interest in it, John. 
Everyone can have an interest in this subject. It's a fun subject to have interest in and to be a part of. But I just don't like the fact that that you, you never see, you know, like if Rob Lowe was going out looking for Sasquatch, you never saw him walking around with Jeff Meldrum. You never saw him, you know, as part of his investigative team. It was him and his son. So, so I, I would argue that on the cryptid side, I, I think it's, I think it's an easier, I think it's a slightly easier solved problem, but I would say on, on the, on the UFO side and so forth, considering what's going on right now, uh, can you think of one, uh, of, of one researcher that, that Demi Lovato could have picked to take with her that, that everyone or even the majority of people would have agreed was a good person to take. It's a well, very I, small number of people. And then from that group, are they actually presentable? Tim are they McMillan. actually TV safe? Tim McMillan. There's one. Granted, he's in Germany. Probably wouldn't want to come. Ross, Ross Coltart. Two. Also, I agree with both of those, but those are both very new folks. Richard Dolan. I don't know. I like personally, I, I, I tend to like Richard's work, but I have to admit, like there is a, there is a, a growing contingency of people that, that, that have doubts in Richard and would not appreciate him being involved. Well, that's fine and dandy, but he's also still one of the faces of the franchise. Agreed. Agreed. But my point is, is that it might be very hard for them to pick someone that isn't going to ruffle feathers. True. True. Well, everyone is going to. That's that's the funny part about it. All right, let's move on here to the next one. Sammy Hagar, we touched on this on the roundtable. Sammy Hagar finally admits again that he has aliens. More of a lifetime of strange encounters. What do you got for us? So this was, first off, I really encourage everyone to go listen to the interview. Uh, it, it's on Mystery Wire. It's actually, it's an interesting interview. It's not very long. Um, and you know, and in the past, Sammy Hagar has not been tremendously secretive about his, the fact that he's had encounters, but in this interview, he really kind of laid it out and he basically kind of explained that this was something that's been happening to him since he was very young, that he's had many different experiences, that it influenced his music. Um, and that he basically, you know, didn't like to talk about it because he didn't want people to think he was crazy, which, you know, I, I. I had to admit, I, I found a little bit entertaining for, for someone, you know, it, it, that's had his role to have, be worried about people thinking he's crazy, but it just shows that that stigma does affect everyone. And it shows that because of what's happening now in the world, he's feeling safer to come out and talk about it. And you never know there, there might be two or three other people that, you know, uh, are in a similar sort of role that, that look at him and go, well, God, man, if Sammy Hagar can get away with it. So can I. And you never know. And so, but it's a good interview and it's worth listening to. It, it was, it was actually really interesting. And I applaud, um, I applaud George Knapp and his team for actually getting this interview because um, it was, it was definitely a, um, a UFO focused conversation. Yeah. I, I think it's great. I wish more stars. I, I mean, here I am totally contradicting myself. No Demi Lovato or Rob Lowe, but Sammy Hagar, rock and roll. Let's get some more names out. You know, I don't mind if the stars come out and say they're experiencers. I think that's positive. Okay. The difference is, so people, because people always need clarifying these days. The difference is when you are using this newfound topic of yours as a, as a scapegoat to make money at a television series to get your name in the forefront, that's where I have an issue. But I could definitely see someone who is in a in a talent role managing one of these folks for them to come and say, hey, I want to go share my experience. And they go, "Uh, uh-uh, you're not going to take risk unless there's some reward. And if you want to go out and talk about this, we have to build something around it. And I could see that happening. Me too. Finally, tonight. And we only got about, you know what, let's let's save this one. Yeah. The anti-gravity club. Yep, yep. All right, let's save that one for when you're on in a couple nights time because we are running out of time here. But uh John, incredible uh, UFO report as per usual. And where can people find you, John? 
Uh, primarily right now on Twitter, uh, you can actually search for my name or you can search for underscore Desmodin. And uh, I post notes to the show as well as some of the other research I do on my own. All right, buddy. Appreciate you. And we're going to get to Shirky Poo's news. Have a good evening.